Hi, this is Scott Stanley, DTG Ministries podcast on the book of Revelation, and we have been looking at the fifth trumpet, Revelation chapter 9. It's hard to just breeze through some of these symbols. It takes time to develop what's happening, what we see happening. Today is no different. Uh, When we read the trumpets, it is a symbol of the giving of the gospel, not the gospel of the universal churches who are in the apostasy. This is the gospel that contradicts that apostasy. And it's interesting how the whole world is in apostasy. The apostasy began, 1 John 2.18, in the days of the apostles. People walked away from the apostolic church. They denied the Father and Son in eternity past, and they denied Christ came without an understanding of God. These things have been covered in, in past podcasts that I would suggest you go listen to. Start at the beginning and just start working your way through it. Because we have come to a place now, the sounding of the fifth trumpet, and it begins, we, we've come to verse 6. Revelation 9, 6. It begins, and in those days shall men seek death. I can't just shoot by this because this is too important. It's too important. We need to understand what the universal church has been doing to us. We need to understand the impact of the iniquity they carry. Why would he say, and in those days? Let me just state again what is happening in Revelation 9, 1 through 5. The gospel has been given contradicting the church and apostasy. They turn to their Bibles Opening their Bibles opens the pit of the abyss, their mind. Out of their minds come locust, which is simply a picture of iniquity. And they are resisting the truth of the gospel they've been taught. So these locusts have authority as scorpions or rebellious people, people who will not hear the law of the Lord or the instruction of the Lord. In those days, men will seek death. Why? Verse 5, they're being tormented As long as the iniquity is there, they are being tormented with the iniquity caused by the locust. You have, when we talk about iniquity, you have doctrinal iniquity, but you have personal iniquity. Christians are trying to live their lives according to the word of God. But what that meant, and I'll have to use myself as an example, what that meant to me was if the Bible says don't commit adultery, then you just don't commit adultery. And I live according to the book. If the Bible says thou shalt not kill, then you don't kill anybody. And you're good. But Christ changed that. 
you were told thou shalt not commit adultery, I say don't even lust. If you lust after a woman, you've already committed adultery. See, he took that commandment and put it inward. And now I have a personal iniquity. What do you mean? To look on a woman and lust. That is personal. That's not doctrinal. Doctrinal is telling me not to do it. Personal would tell me how to not do it, how to stop. But I can't stop. And I'm having an experience that Paul explains in Romans 7, I'm agreeing that the law is good, but what I want to do, I'm not doing. What I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. And he says it's the iniquity in him causing that. That is what is going on when you read these people resisting the truth, their iniquity is tormenting them. Just think about it for a minute. Think about knowing that God does not want you, say, involved in pornography. But you can't turn from it. You don't have the power to turn from it sometimes. And so you look at the pornography, you do what you do, and then that torments you. That is what Paul is speaking of in Romans 7. He cries out at one point, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Oh, well, God will deliver you through Jesus Christ. But the way they are teaching Jesus Christ does not deliver them. They are teaching he died to pay your sin debt. The scriptures say he died to redeem us from iniquity. Titus 2.14 So if we can learn what that means to be delivered from iniquity, redeemed from iniquity, If we can learn what that means, we can turn from sin, and as Paul states in Romans 6, ye who are dead to sin, how shall you live any longer in it? I always found that interesting that he is talking about being dead to sin in Romans 6 too. And I was told I couldn't stop sinning until Jesus comes and gives me a new body. There was a contradiction. So it's obvious when I'm looking at Revelation 9, this fifth trumpet, these people are believers. They're just rejecting for whatever reason. They're rejecting the true gospel being given to them. And they themselves are continuing to be workers of iniquity because they don't know how to turn from it. The cross depicts the result of iniquity. And it depicts how you turn from it. How do you turn from it? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. You find death. For who? For you at the cross. Your death is what is at the cross. Let me read you something. We're in Romans 6. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to start at verse 1. All of this is important. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in the sin that grace may abound? I have learned that when you put the definite article in front of the word sin, it's referring to iniquity. The King James did not put the definite article here. But I'm going to read these verses. If it's there, I'm going to read iniquity. If the definite article isn't there, I'll read it the way it says, sin. Verse 2, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to iniquity live any longer in it? 
Know ye not that as many of us as were immersed into Jesus Christ were immersed into his death. That does not mean you went and got in the baptismal water and they ducked you under water, saying in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That is not the baptism he is speaking of. He is speaking of being immersed in the water of the word. You have been taught, is what he is saying. You've been immersed into the death of Christ. Someone needs to set you down and explain the cross. Maybe that is what was being taught in the fifth trumpet. What happened at the cross. And these people are resisting that trying to prove that they themselves are capable of death to self, but they're not able to die. Because that when in, is, is what we're reading in that trumpet. Let me go ahead and continue reading in Romans 6, and we've got to go back to Revelation 9. Verse 3, Know ye not that as many of us as were immersed into Jesus Christ are immersed into his death? Have you been taught about Jesus? Well, if you have, you were taught about his death because that is what matters. Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him through immersion into death, that like as Christ was raised out of the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united, bound together in the likeness of his death, will be also in the likeness of his resurrection. That is what is lacking in the universal church. People are taught to pray the prayer, pray the sinner's prayer. Now, let your church baptize you and you become a member of their church. But you are not immersed into the death of Christ. You have no idea what the crown of thorns meant. You have no idea what the stripes on his back meant. And for Peter to say, by his stripes you're healed, For you, that means he paid my penalty. Whereas the reality of that is something much deeper, much more profound that sets you free from iniquity. So here we see you find death with Christ at the cross. Revelation 9, verse 6, men are seeking death and they can't find it. Again, here he does not mean literal, physical death. He means death to self, dying to self. How many times have we heard it quoted, 1 Corinthians fifteen, thirty-one, I think, that I die daily? Why would Paul say, I die daily? And here... In Revelation 9, 6, they can't find death. People don't understand what that means, to die. They don't understand what it means to see the cross, understand the effect of iniquity, the result of iniquity, and how to overcome iniquity. You overcome iniquity by death to self. And I am i couldn't be more sure when I read Revelation 9 that these people cannot find death to self. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 10. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of Jesus. See, that goes right back to Romans 6. You unite with him in death. 
we're always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. You die to self so you can manifest his life. Now look at the next verse. For we which live are always delivered to death. You remember the story of the prodigal son? When he came home, his father met him a long way off. And remember, the father makes the statement, my son was dead, yet now he's alive. He didn't mean physically dead. He meant spiritually dead. When he comes back to the Father, now he's alive. See, you can be uh, an unbeliever living in the world. For me, I reached a point in my life where I cried out to God. The drugs, the alcohol, everything going on in my life was destroying me. And I cried out to God. See, at that point... I was spiritually dead. But I cried out to God, and he came in my life. And I was converted. I had a conversion experience that suddenly, in the snap of a finger, I stopped the alcohol and drugs, my language, everything got cleaned up. I came alive unto God. The problem is... I didn't stay in that place. The problem is, just like when we look at the horses in Revelation in the sixth chapter, I started off on a white horse, but I was handed the great sword. The sword is the Bible. And what happened? Peace was taken from the earth. The horse was red. See, I was reading the Bible according to my own understanding, and peace was taken from the earth. I read the Bible and read everything that I thought, this is what God wants me to do. For instance, keep the Ten Commandments. Well, okay, let's keep the Ten Commandments. Well, then you say, well, if you lust, you've already broken it. You've committed adultery. If you get angry, you've already murdered And that was impossible for me to not get angry, impossible not to lust. So doctrines were invented or created to help me overlook what I was doing. Pastors, people would tell me, well, nobody can stop sinning. He He just means don't continue in it. He doesn't mean you can stop sinning. You can't do that until he come, until you get a new body. Now you can stop sinning. So my life and understanding of what God wanted of me at times tormented me. I was tormented because I had no power to overcome and live righteously. As as Matthew says, be as perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, that was impossible. I couldn't figure it out. Well, how do you do that? Well, I couldn't figure it out because my church was in apostasy. They were telling me Jesus died to pay my debt. Okay, well, that doesn't give me any power over sin. I might come and find comfort. Oh, he paid that debt. Okay, he paid my penalty. Praise God. But there's no power to stop sinning. And you can't find death in the false gospel. So when I look, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 11, we which live are always delivered unto death. See, it isn't a one-time thing. It's something you learn to find death when you need it to turn from your anger, to turn from your lust, to turn from your own way. We which live are always delivered unto death. 
for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, not when he returns and gives me a new body, but in my mortal flesh. So you see the contradictions compared to what the universal church is saying and what the scriptures are telling us. The death of Jesus Christ redeems you from all iniquity. And he gives you victory over sin now. He gives you victory over the iniquity. So, Revelation 9 In those days men seek death and they don't find it. They want to die. But death flees from them. It is important that, I mean, I I can keep building on symbols and just go on through this chapter and just finish it. But God won't let me do that. My conscience won't let me do that. My heart won't let me do that. The Lord Jesus Christ died for a reason. God painted a picture to show us our problem, iniquity, and to show us how to overcome iniquity. Dying with Christ on that cross. You die with him. It's interesting, Easter, how people celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Christ. But I began to realize, well, I know he was resurrected. I believe that. But so was I. I have united with him in death. And his resurrection is a picture of my resurrection. I was resurrected with Christ and, according to Ephesians 2, I am seated with him in the heavens. That is a reality because I believe it. And it can be the reality for every one of us. Or you can resist the true gospel and find yourself in this place, the first woe, Revelation 9, there are three woes to come, and Revelation 9 is telling you the first woe. We'll get into the second woe eventually. But I can't do that without giving the warnings. First John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. In God there's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. And we're not doing the truth. That is what happened to me in the universal church system. The anger I carried... No one gave me the instruction of iniquity and how I can turn from iniquity and I don't have to carry that anger. No one explained that to me. No one explained to me that I can turn from my lust and I don't have to look at pornography. No one explained that to me. What I was told is God doesn't want you to do that and you're going to go to hell if you do it, so stop doing it. So what do you do? Well, you hide it from everybody. You don't want anyone to know that you looked at pornography. The church is not there to help you. They condemn each other. When Christ redeemed you from iniquity, he destroyed the works of the devil. The devil is the author of iniquity. Christ is destroyed the works of the devil because he turned you from iniquity to serve the true and living God. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we 
desperately need your help. We want to understand these prophecies, but even if we know all prophecies and we can't walk in love, then we're nothing. I ask you, reveal yourself to us. We're thankful for everything you're helping us see. We pray to be perfected. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.